Good morning. It's Wednesday, March 18th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Cracked Pot Decisions. In our scriptures, Jeremiah chapter 2. Listen to the word of the Lord, people of Jacob, all you families of Israel. This is what the Lord says. What did your ancestors find wrong with me that led them to stray so far from me? They worshipped worthless idols only to become worthless themselves. Go west and look in the land of Cyprus. Go east and search through the land of Kedar. Has anyone ever heard of anything as strange as this? Has any nation ever traded its gods for new ones, even though they're not gods at all? Yet my people have exchanged their glorious God for worthless idols. The heavens are shocked at such a thing and shrink back in horror and dismay, says the Lord. For my people have done two evil things. They have abandoned me, the fountain of living water, and they have dug for themselves cracked cisterns that can hold no water at all. The term crackpot may have outlived its usefulness. It was a great debating vilification of the other side's position some centuries ago when pottery was in daily use in the average household. Everyone then knew a cracked pot wouldn't do what it was created to do, hold milk or wine or water. So a crackpot idea was one that wouldn't hold anything valuable, thereby making it a worthless position. Jeremiah's whole point about Israel's cracked pot decision-making was that they'd made worthless decisions about their God and had, accordingly, become worthless cracked pots themselves. The scathing rebuke for Israel is that, in the same way you get up covered in fleas if you lie down with the yard dogs, you also become whatever you worship. They had exchanged the glory of Almighty God for the worthlessness of carved idols of stone. They'd gone from riches to rags. It's not an easy ride reading the words of a prophet like Jeremiah. Day after day, his finger points loudly at our decisions gone wrong. And what is so annoying about Jeremiah is that he's simply right. The choices didn't have to go wrong had the leaders and followers simply chosen to use the unfailing vessel of godliness rather than the cracked pot of selfishness. They had accepted God's gracious covenant only to then, strangely enough, return to idols and superstition. It was like the sign-then-drive events at car dealerships. They'd signed the deal, rode away in the convertible, forgot about their part in the bargain, and were never heard from again. When the car of their cracked pot theology began to break down, they'd come back to the altar and point to the covenant terms as if God were the one breaking the deal. Jeremiah called that strange indeed. Whether or not our country was founded intentionally as a Christian nation or not, is a debate I'm not willing to explore today. However, it is hardly debatable that we are anything but a Christian nation today. From the pornography on TV screens and theaters to price gouging in a COVID-19 crisis and the selfish posturing of politicians and justifying sexually perverted alternative lifestyles, we can proclaim Christianity as a national profile until we're blue in the face from holding our breath against the stench of sin. We as a nation have abandoned whatever humility we may once have owned toward the God of grace and glory, and we've done it in favor of the idols of self-gratification, money, power, and prestige. In answer to Jeremiah's question, has anyone ever heard of anything as strange as this? Has any nation ever traded its gods for new ones, even though they're not gods at all? Yep. For you today, perhaps it's time to stop holding everyone else accountable and begin again the true Christian practice of looking within. We might start asking God to judge us and set us straight. Then, at least in heaven, we might have a shot at not being such a nation of cracked pots. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.